You're listening to Boss Ladies and Babies with Mickey and Megan, two best friends adventuring through motherhood, building our careers, and and not losing losing our shit. Welcome back to Boss Ladies and Babies. This is Mickey. And this is Megan. Hey, everyone. Hey, Mickey. Hi. We have a really interesting and different episode for you guys this week. We are talking about gender roles, which turned into like a mashup of gender roles slash parenting issues. And I mean, the conversation just went there and covered so many things and is just so, so fun and hopefully groundbreaking. I don't know. I just feel really inspired (laughs) after this conversation. Um, But before we get into it, let's do our usual thing and kick off the episode. Highs and lows. Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. Um, So my high, this is super dorky, you guys, but this is like a huge moment for me. So um, I am going to be the new PTA president this school year. Um, And normally we'd be having... um, like our big in-person fundraiser, which is a jogathon. It's like a, our only fundraiser we do, and it's a really big deal and so much fun. Since we are learning remotely, um, we had to find a different fundraiser to do. So we're selling bed sheets, which just seems so <laughs> random. <laughs> so random. Yeah, but it's like all online. It's really simple and easy to do. Um, hopefully, you know, it'll go over well, but um, they... I, basically long story short which is, isn't even a long story but I got to make a video to send out to the entire school um about the fundraiser and so they were like oh yeah um we need to get some information I was like oh yeah like I'd love to make a video like okay and then a couple of days later like oh how's the video coming I was like what I haven't even started it and then I was like why did I volunteer to do this I don't know how to make a video like how am I even gonna do this so pandemic's been training me tiktok (laughs) so i used tiktok to edit it i ended up having to make like three tiktok videos because it was long and then like piece them together in a video editing thing but not to toot my own horn but it turned out so good yeah super embarrassing multiple costume changes really silly but informative and like i think it went really well and so i sent it in and i don't know when they're going to be sending it out but like it's going to everyone. <laughs> so you're like the it is, lead of the video. I am the only person in the video talking. <laughs> yes, it's me. Yeah. Oh, I gotta show you when we're done with this. It's pretty good. I I might have to share it probably on my Facebook page because I might. I mean, I might get discovered. This could be my big film it's debut your moment. Yeah, it is. So. That was my high because I had way too much fun. It took me three hours in my bedroom. I had like our TV tray table on our bed with my phone propped up to, as my camera. I had a lamp on the bed to give me some lighting, which worked out really good because I think I look pretty good if I do say so myself. <laughs> so funny. So that was my high. It was a lot of fun. Dream come true. And I got to tell the whole school that I'm the PTA president. It was yeah. just like a really big highlight for me. <laughs> Okay, I think we need to get you a tripod, a ring light. Oh, yeah, it was getting <laughs> Piper. legit. <laughs> I know, Piper walked in the door and she's like, what are you doing? Why is that thing on your bed? I was like, don't interrupt me, okay? Mommy's making magic. No, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> Did not yeah. interrupt the process. Yeah. Just, I'll show you when it's done. Um, Congrats. Yeah, so that was super fun. Um, let's see, my low... Uh... We are building a shed um, to put all our PTA stuff in. And I'm just having a really, the worst customer experience, customer service experience I've ever had, ever. To the point where I was like actually almost in tears today. They just ordered lumber from Lowe's online last week and it said it would ship the next day. Cool. Well, the next day comes and I call, they can't even find my order. Like they, they're like, Where's, there's no record of you. I'm like, okay, maybe it's just not in your system yet. So I wait and I call back like two days later um, and they finally find me and she's like, okay, yeah, well, we'll schedule, schedule you for Monday. I was like, okay, great. Everything was fine. I, I, Monday comes around and I call and I'm like, I just, you know, my order's supposed to be here um, today. 
first of all, every time I called, I just like couldn't get a hold of someone. It'd be customer service. What do you want? Oh, delivery, please. They'd send me, it'd ring, and then silence. No, no like hold music, anything. Then it kicked me back to customer service over and over and over and over enough to drive you insane couldn't get a hold of someone finally did and she's like oh yeah um i'm like i need the driver to call me i need to give him specific directions where to put it it's going to a school like you can't just show up and drop it off no one's gonna know what you're there for okay so we my husband and i and the kids drive over to the school and we're like working on the shed waiting for this wood and then i get a call in the afternoon And she's like, oh, sorry, he just was really busy today, and it's not going to be there today. I was like, what do you mean? (laughs) She's like, yeah. I was like, it was supposed to be last week. How is this happening? She's like, well, I'll get it all staged and ready to go on the truck first thing in the morning. Okay, great. Bye. Go home. This morning, I woke up and started calling them at 9 o'clock. Could not get a hold of the delivery department for four hours. Mm. I'm finally just freaking fuming called and i'm like i need to speak to your manager or a real human like i need to speak to someone (laughs) finally got a hold of someone they're like oh yeah i see that it's on on the truck um they should be there between one and four and i was like okay go to the school working it's 3 30 and i call can't get a hold of someone give me the customer service she finally gives me the delivery driver's name she's like yeah it should still be there between one and four but um here's his number So I call the delivery driver. I'm like, hi, I'm waiting on a delivery today. I just need to make sure to tell you where to go. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't have that order. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I've been out in, like, this and this place. Yeah, I'm not going to make it up there tonight. I'm like, they told me. Oh, I just. Did you lose it? I'm so mad. I didn't lose it on him because I know it wasn't his Mm -hmm. fault. And he's like, yeah, I'll get it on the truck first thing in the morning. Um. I'll call you when I'm on my way and I have his phone number so I can actually call and talk to a real person. But oh my God, having to call customer service over and over again. And I'm just not normally a person to like nag, like call and Mm -hmm. okay, is it going to be here today? There's people waiting. Like my husband spending his week off waiting on this shit to build this shed, volunteering. I need to know when it's coming. Yeah. It's just been the biggest frustrating pain in my ass ever. And so I've just been like mad for I guess just two full days. <laughs> it's so frustrating. That's a lot, though. Oh my gosh, yeah. I would have. Yeah, I I do not have patience for that kind of stuff. You know, and the worst part is, I was like finally mad enough, and I'm not like a confrontational no. person, but I was like, I'm going Karen on someone's ass. I couldn't <laughs> even get a hold of someone to yell at. I'm like, this is like the most annoying thing. Like, I'm mad and I want to yell at someone, and no one will answer the phone to let me yell at them. Like, what the hell? That is awesome. So annoying. But yeah. Oh, well, I got it out here. Yeah, you heard it here. I feel better now. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay, so my high, I think I'm gonna go with. I just had my lifestyle branding shoot, which I oh my gosh, it was just so much fun. So Kelsey Curtis, she's been on our show before talking about branding, and many, well, not many years ago, I guess, but I was pregnant with Nora, so a few years ago. And I met Kelsey and she had this idea to do lifestyle branding. And she asked me if I wanted to try it out with her and be her guinea pig. And it was so fun. And I got amazing images from it. And I just like didn't feel the most confident because I was like 18 weeks pregnant. And so I always, you know, was like, oh man, I wish I would have done this at a different time, blah, blah. So I had a bunch of closings this last quarter. And so I decided I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to use some of my marketing budget and I'm going to redo these lifestyle images because everything is social media now. And I really want to have these beautiful images and also just Kelsey's amazing. I want to support her and I want to just experience this again. So she came all the way out to my house, which was so, so fun. Um, I was brave and like, she came inside my house. She had her mask on. I didn't have my mask on because I was getting these pictures taken. So it was like kind of a big deal for me. But um, she was super, you know, respectful and professional and everything was really safe. And she just has a way of making you feel like a total badass. Like she is the biggest hype man. She's so good at what she does, like the posing, the planning, everything. It was just it was a four hour shoot, which is freaking exhausting for me. I can't imagine what it's like for her with the drive time and everything. Like it was just 
such a good experience and I cannot wait to get these pictures back and like start upping my marketing a little bit more with these images. It was just, oh my gosh, it was so fun. So I'm all hyped up from that. Yeah. Really good high. I saw just your like behind the scenes sneak peeks and all of that. You looked gorgeous. Thank you. I'm so yeah, I'm so excited to see all your pictures and some with Nora. Like that's we so did cute. a lot with Nora because she's such a big part of my brand, and so that was important to me. To we got a couple with Q in there too, but we just did family photos, and she's not really like a family photographer, and so we really just focused on like solo pictures, which was weird because it's like us as moms never really have like just pictures of ourselves um so we did a lot of solo and then we did like the second half was all like with Nora and I because she's she's always there like she's so much she's the baby to boss ladies and babies you know so Uh we just had to like really just focus on her so yeah and she oh my gosh she you guys she was amazing she was like looking at the camera smiling posing like following directions I'm like okay Okay, model. (laughs) There we go. So that was really fun. Um, If you guys have any desire to like work on your own personal brand and want some kind of images like that, I would highly suggest Kelsey Curtis. She travels, so it doesn't matter where you're located. So it was a little plug for her because she is the best. Um, Let's see. My low. This is like so petty and I'm so annoyed at myself for even first of all even being annoyed by this and also for feeling the need to share this like I'm I'm just like judging myself so much but it just for some reason really irked me and so I'm just gonna get it out there and (laughs) be petty this time um okay so social media is just like we all know what social media is it's just like the best and the worst, right? And yes, it is all a bunch of people copying other people's ideas and putting their own spin on it and just like redoing the same stuff. Like that's what trending is. And, you know, that's just, I, we all do it. We see something, oh, that's a good idea. Let me make it my own and post it. Sure. Everyone's guilty of that. So, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so annoyed at myself. Okay. So, The other night I was just like picking my brain and the way that my brain works is like just randomly I'll get these like big ideas and I'll just cannot put myself to rest until I execute that idea right away. It's just like how things go for me. So I was just sitting on the couch like watching my show and I've been really racking my brain about some different prospecting things for my real estate business because things are a little bit slower for me right now. And so I'm like, what can I do? Like really trying to think of things I haven't tried before. So I put it out there on Facebook. Hey, friends, I want to offer five complimentary market analysis this week. So message me and we'll see how much your home's worth. And I had it, you know, worded and like took me a while to like get the exact words and everything. Right. I post it. (laughs) Okay. It's like 10 o'clock at night, too, when I post this. So literally 10 minutes later. I'm scrolling through my feed and this person that I've recently started like kind of talking to on Facebook, new to the area and is a real estate agent. And I see, Hey friends, I'm hoping to do five complimentary market analysis this week. Comment, blah, blah, blah. If you're interested and maybe like, maybe the last sentence was changed, Mm -hmm. but literally the, me of what it was was literally copied and pasted from what I had just posted I was so mad and I I okay I appreciate that somebody thought it was a good idea I appreciate them wanting to share that idea I, I like I really love that they say like imitation is the biggest form of flattery whatever love that I know that when I'm putting stuff out there, it's like fair game for somebody else. And I'm sure I'm not the first person who's even put that out there. I probably saw it somewhere. God knows when and, you know, just remembered it. Or maybe it was the original idea. I don't even know at this point. But to copy and paste exactly what somebody else posted 10 minutes later, I'm just like, 
Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so then I like spent all this time, like making this Instagram story about it. And then I accidentally posted it to Instagram and Facebook. And I was like, oh crap, I don't want to post it on Facebook because I don't want this person to see it. So I like deleted it and remade the story and like put it on Instagram. And that didn't make me feel any better. And I just felt like a jerk. So then I deleted it before really many people saw it. But now I'm talking about it on here. So I'm still (laughs) just like a petty jerk. (laughs) No, I I feel you on that though. Especially like within the 10 minutes. Right? Like, at least, like, if you find a good idea, like, maybe wait a week or something so the, they're not, like, taking people that would do it with you from mm-hmm. you, like, come from clients or whatever. Um, yeah, just tacky. It's just or, tacky. Like, change the wording or, like, put it on a graphic. Like, if this isn't, like, and, like, I'm guilty of, like, stealing a lot of pictures from, like, Pinterest or here or there. Like, oh, that's a cool picture. I'm going to steal it and save it to my phone. Like, we're all guilty of that. But just the fact that it was literally just copied and pasted it made me so mad. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't feel better. I feel annoyed <laughs> at myself. <laughs> I'm annoying. I'm sorry you had to just listen to that. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. We're all allowed to feel petty every once in a while. It's totally understandable. Yeah. Especially so- like in it being on social media, just like digs it in a little more Mm. because it's so so annoying to begin with yeah so if you're that person and you happen to be listening to this podcast like we're good but just like (laughs) next time maybe just like you know don't do that (laughs) (laughs) let's have a brainstorming session or something like I'm more than happy to like chat with you so yeah that's great there you go (laughs) All right, well, let's (laughs) dig into the episode. Um, So we mentioned already that we're going to be talking about gender roles. Um, We talk, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good conversation. A lot of, I think, like a big variety of um, opinions and backgrounds, and just kind of some cool discussion. Um, Our guest tonight, I'm very excited about. Um, Her name is Jessica. She's actually my other best friend. So I got to have both of my girls on here tonight, which is amazing. Um, Jessica's a total boss lady. She works for T-Mobile. She is a um, territory manager, I think she's called. Kind of a big deal. And um, a mama to be. So let's welcome Jessica to the show. Hey, Jessica. Welcome to our show. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to talk to you about gender roles tonight. Yes, we can't wait to dive in. But before we get started, why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners all about yourself, who you are, what you do. Tell us everything. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Really excited to be here with you guys. Um, Let's see, a little bit about me. Uh, I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm 33, I think. I lose track sometimes. (laughs) Uh, I am happily married uh, to my husband. I'm a proud mother of my fur baby, Leo, and expecting my very first, uh, I guess, real real baby (laughs) Uh, (laughs) in approximately 20 weeks. Um, But let's see, as far as like work, so I work for T-Mobile. I've worked there for about 11 years. I'm a territory manager, which nobody knows what that means, but it definitely sounds like I conquered a territory of people, so I really enjoy that part of it. Um, I mostly just tell people I'm a district manager because that seems to be something that people understand. They're like, oh, district manager, but it's a little bit different. Um, I so Every cellular store, a lot of stores, they have stores that are operated by third parties, so different companies run them, um, and actually, like, 75, 80% of the T-Mobile stores are not actually owned or or operated by T-Mobile. And so my job is to go into those stores and make sure that they are operating um, like T-Mobile wants them to operate. So if you're a customer and you go in any store, um, you should get the same experience. You should have the same options, same dress code, stuff like that. So in a nutshell, I'm like halftime auditor. So I get to like lay the smack down on some fools if they're like not (laughs) wearing the right color pants. (laughs) And uh, halftime, just like educator, teaching people um, how to take better care of customers, how to sell more, um, and how to write fit, stuff like that. So that's kind of my job in a nutshell. Um, And that is me in a nutshell, I guess. That's that's about me. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I have to say, everyone, that Jessica and I have been best friends since eighth grade. So tonight I have my two best friends on here and I'm so excited. And this is like our hundredth take because we can't get it together. We're having so much fun. So yeah, good night for me. Just want to throw that out there. Um, but we can start talking about our topic because this is going to be an interesting one. Um, we're talking about gender roles tonight. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. Jessica is expecting a boy. Megan has a little girl and I have one of each. And I think we all have um, kind of different roles that we observed growing up. And I thought we could kind of start there. So what about, how did you guys grow up seeing, you know, your parents? How do you think that those kind of gender roles have shaped your adult relationships? It's like, let's dive into our past a little bit. Good question. Um, you know, for me, it's interesting because I think I came from a very traditional in the sense of right, normal gender roles, whatever traditional means nowadays, mm -hmm. I think is up for grabs. Um, my dad was the sole provider for the most part. My mom had like part-time jobs here and there when she could, but for the most part, uh, she was raising, you know, myself and my, my, uh, four siblings. And even when she did have part-time jobs here and there, she was still expected to cook dinner, keep the house clean. My dad paid the bills, you know, stuff like that. But I do remember my mom still kind of like being the boss. Hmm. So it's interesting to look back and see like, okay, it was very typical, but like, I don't think my dad really made a lot of decisions <laughs> besides <laughs> like, honey, I'm, I bought this car or something like that. So mm -hmm. know, those are the gender roles that I definitely grew up with. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting as an adult now, and especially as being like wives and parents ourselves, looking back on how kind of we thought things were growing up versus now, you know, being on that side of life, seeing, you know, what things maybe really were. It's just, it can be a little bit surprising that it's so much different than what you thought. Um, for me, very, very like typical gender roles where my dad was same sole provider for the family. He worked, he actually worked two jobs. Um, and my mom stayed home, did all the housework, the cooking. I remember as a kid, she would like lay out my dad's outfits for work the next day and everything. And, um, that kind of stopped as time went on. And then she, my mom eventually did go to work. Um, as time went on, I was, I was like a teenager when she did that, but just growing up and watching like my mom be this like amazing homemaker really, really set me up for having high expectations to do that as well. And that's kind of just like how I always saw myself. And then once I actually got into marriage and like motherhood and everything, I'm like, wait, that's not what I really want to do. <laughs> like The idea of that sounds good. Like mm -hmm. I love the idea of playing house, but you know, for me, I realized quickly like, okay, I grew up with this model and that's great, but you know, for myself, it's not exactly how I want things to look. Yeah. But it's so, it's so interesting because for me, it was almost the opposite. Um, growing, like growing up, I remember just thinking that my mom didn't really, I mean, it's probably later growing up. I don't think I was a nine year old, like, oh my God, my mother doesn't have her own identity. She's just a mother. But like, <laughs> as I got older, I remember thinking that like her, her entire identity was so compiled of mothering us that I remember growing up and being like I don't want kids mm -hmm. I want to have my own life I want to be independent mm -hmm. I mean Mickey's known this about me for years I have always adamantly said I will never have children like I've, I've and so I think a lot of it is that is my dad had things that he would go do or kind of like hobbies or or whatever and my mom she was just fully consumed with motherhood and so I think that's why I so separated myself from that is because I I was like, I want to have a career. I want to do all of this stuff. So you can't do both, right? Like that was, that was mm -hmm. my idea. It's, it's mm -hmm. not possible. So it's interesting yeah. to hear yeah. kind of the, the, the juxtaposition there. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, my childhood was untraditional in a lot of ways. <laughs> Just <laughs> I wasn't raised by like my mom and my dad. I grew up with my grandma and then um, for a large chunk of my young childhood, um, my aunt, uncle. And in that relationship, um, they both worked, but I think my aunt probably at least made more money than my uncle. So there was like a little bit 
more of that dynamic, um, but they definitely both worked. And then eventually um, I lived with my dad and my stepmom and they, my dad always worked and then they opened a business together and then it just slowly became my stepmom working and my dad not so much or doing like little odd jobs. So looking back, I've always had a really strong like working female role models mm -hmm. and not like a typical stay at home parent. Um, my stepmom stayed home for a little bit. So we got like to play house and do like stay at home mom thing for a little while. But um, that was fun. But I know that that wasn't for her either. Um, so I think seeing <laughs> it's so funny, like how those things affect us now growing up that way and um, having like career and work be such a strong, important force in our like family dynamic. Um, it's completely something that I don't want, <laughs> which is like <laughs> so weird to say, like, I don't want my, I I've just always adamantly wanted to be that stay at home mom, like a housewife, um, do, you know, not have to worry about really, I just didn't want a job at all, ever. I was like, <laughs> I worked enough as a teenager. Can I just like now sit back? Which one staying home is not sitting back. This is the hardest shit ever, ever so much harder than I expected it to be. But um, I'm thankful that I do get to stay home and kind of have that role. But I know as my kids get older, I'm also going to, you know, I'm going to have to go through that finding myself stage, like you said, Jessica, like find my own identity. That's not just being my kid's mom so um it's interesting I, I didn't even really think about like the gender roles as I was growing up until we were like preparing for this episode and I was like wow I I guess I have always been around like really strong working women and that's just you know a good really good role models but it's funny that that's just something that kind of turned me off to that I guess mm -hmm. Do you think part of your wanting to stay home isn't so much that you're like, I don't want to have a job or <laughs> whatever, but you're like, I mean. <laughs> you didn't have that stability at home and you want to provide yeah. that? That's what I've yeah. always like gotten yeah. from you is you're like, you know what, this is what was lacking for me. I'm going to make sure that's absolutely what my children have. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And I think the job part of it just because um, sometimes most of the time I felt like the business took kind of precedence over a lot of like childhood experiences I would have liked to have so even when I do choose to either run you know boost my own business at home or find some kind of work I want to make sure that I am home when my kids get home from school every day and I don't want to have to not make it to their soccer game because I have to work like that that impacted my life so much that I refuse to have that happen to them so mm -hmm. that's um yeah some childhood yeah. You know, deep traumas we're gonna bring up. In this <laughs> no, it's good to talk about it. And I mean, when you look back at your childhood and just think of like how many of those things really do affect you. And the like, I kind of was saying earlier in the episode, the more you start to realize it as you get older, and like what you're saying about you know missing soccer games, things like that. That was one thing my parents, even with my dad working, they were always at every everything that we needed them and my mom was like the hugest support system and so I think that I was kind of conditioned to want to provide that for my family as well but then as I'm blooming into this you know woman and just kind of watching the way that gender roles are shifting in the society around us it's like there's this I'm split in half there's this complete half of me that was conditioned to watch like this strong woman who was our mom and you know I never really looked at it as the not having her own identity until now when I'm a mom myself but just watching her you know do this and just envisioning that's what my life's going to be like I want I want to do just that like that's what I want and then as I'm growing and this other part of me is splitting off that's like I am here for another purpose too I don't necessarily want to say greater because, you know, there's not much greater than raising your child, but this other, like almost equally a strong calling that is becoming like this business side of me. And it makes me just be like a totally split person on wanting to do both things completely evenly and go as hard for both things. And fortunately, the way that society's progressing is we can do that. 
as women if we choose to. And that makes things a lot easier externally, but internally it is just like a constant battle. No, yeah, it's interesting because that's one of my kind of things that I'm I'm curious about or interested or maybe a little anxious about, about having a kid is um, I have been all in, in work since well, I was like 16. I've mm-hmm. always put work first. Like I remember uh, going to prom and then having to wake up the next day and drive to work where everybody else got to like hang out for a weekend, missing football mm-hmm. games at high school because I was like, I got to work. I got to like move up in, in this thing. And a lot of that comes just from instability and, and you know, being really uh, poor when we were younger, but I'm still like that. So mm-hmm. I still like, and I, you know, I find myself having been really fortunate over the last couple of years because my partner is completely supportive of that. He gets it. Like our motto has been for a couple of years. Now we work. The idea is like we work yeah. now and we get mm-hmm. shit done and we get mm-hmm. to a really good place and then we have the life that we really want. Um, but part of me that is worried that that's like who I've become mm-hmm. and like that I'm going to have this kid and either I'm going to still be drawn to work over my child because I've still never like felt maternal instinct <laughs> except for for my cat, <laughs> if mm-hmm. I'm being honest. Um mm-hmm. But then the other part of me is worried that I'm going to have this child and exactly to your point, I'm going to have this, I'm going to be pulled into two directions and I've been very successful at work, but is that because I'm so devoted to work? So Mm -hmm. am I going to lose part of that drive that people know me for that hardworking um, person that, that that I've known as like my brand at work and and am I going to like lose some of that or, you know, I don't know. It's just, I, I find myself thinking about it kind of constantly, if I'm being honest, like, am I going to be an absentee parent? And I'm, am I going to be, you know, my dad <laughs> where I'm like working long hours and I'm like, Oh wait, I didn't even know you were, you were playing baseball. Like, that's cool. No, my dad never did that. But like, <laughs> uh, you know, um, so yeah, I, just, I find myself wondering about that, but I think that's to your point, like you're, you're two people and it's a balance that I hope that I will figure out. I guess we'll find out. I mean, so just prepare yourself for either way, really. I mean, if this is kind of my unsolicited advice, but it might happen where you still are more drawn to work than, than motherhood. And that's okay because, you know, you're going to be the kind of mother that you know, in your heart is right. And if that feels right for you, that's going to make it so that you're the best mom that you can be. And if you are split, you'll figure it out. It's think so many things are going to change once that baby is here. And no matter where it takes you with your work drive versus your motherhood drive, it's okay. No matter how it turns out, because especially saying like, am I going to be like my dad and that you grew up with that. So you can learn from, okay, so my dad missed this or that. How can I still achieve these goals that I want? And also, you know, fill in the blanks of what might have been missing. Yeah. What's funny too is like, okay, we're talking about gender roles, right? If I was a man, this wouldn't be a conversation. This wouldn't be a concern because Mm -hmm. men Mm -hmm. are expected and allowed to put work first. That's absolutely Mm what, yeah, of course, of course, they're not going to be at their kid's birthday party because they have to close this client or or, or whatever. But Mm -hmm. I know that it would be perceived as a much bigger, oh, you know, deal if, if I were to be that way. So it is, you know, that's the the ugly rearing head of, of those gender roles that we've perpetrated for so long. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about the gender roles in your adult life with work and relationships and marriage, because we can kind of feel the conversation going that way. Do you guys conform to traditional, and this is major air quotes here, traditional gender roles in your adult life and your marriage? Uh, we definitely do not. Um, you know, Rudy and I have, uh, you know, it's funny, we, we often talk about the fact that we don't, we don't feel like anything about us is traditional or, or, or typical <laughs> um, in like any way that you, you break it down. Um, and we're definitely more of a partnership, but um, from the, the textbook, you know, on paper way that you typically associate gender roles in a relationship, we're, we're pretty opposite. Um, I am the money maker for the family um, by a long shot. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to say long shot. Rudy's an up and comer, so he'll get fixed. <laughs> um, but you know, I, yeah, I'm the, I'm the primary provider and there was a a length of time where I was the sole provider. Um, and that just worked for us. There was, it didn't, it was never a conversation about like, Hey, whose career comes first or, or whatever. It was, 
Rudy has always just been like, hey, girl, you're killing it. Like, let's make sure you can keep killing it. Um, and, you know, it, we talked about that for, you know, I, I, I made sure to talk to him about it at first. Like, is this, you know, is this a problem for you? I just didn't know. Like, it was such a new, it was such new territory for me. I, I'd been used to being equal-ish. Uh, I mean, I guess. I've always been like a little bit better than like everybody. No, <laughs> uh, no not, not better, but you know, um, more driven career wise. But um, it's just never been an issue. It's never even been a conversation. It's just always worked out that way. Um, and even though, like, on, again, on paper, you know, people would say, like, oh, Jessica wears the pants. Like, that's not, that's not how our, our actual relationship is. is we are very, um, we're just, we're a partnership. Like, there is nobody who's in charge, there's no, nobody makes a decision for all of us it's always like a what do we do how do we do it what works best for us um and I've always really appreciated that because I've been in other relationships where I have felt like I was like they were you know they're trying to tell me what to do and I'm like first of all that's not that's not how I roll but um (laughs) yeah so I would definitely say we're not we're not typical in that respect um let's see I'm like trying to think about my own marriage it's hard to like (laughs) look inside um so we did have the conversation when we um had kids that um it was important to both of us that I stay home so that's what I've been doing for the past seven years which that is insane to say out loud (laughs) like really really um like need a moment (laughs) it's so long to be home um so in in probably only that aspect, um, I am here with the kids all day. I'm not a good housewife. I am a terrible cook. Um, <laughs> I pay our bills, but my husband's obviously like the sole provider. Um, so it, I guess it's kind of like it could be traditional norms if I like was good at it. <laughs> We're kind of like like the grown up, and then I'm like his college roommate nanny. <laughs> <laughs> but but we are a partnership like you said and we you know all the decisions we're very like we're a team everything goes for both of us um it's not just he makes the money so he gets to make the decisions it's really good with you know that dynamic um what about you Megan <laughs> let's see let's see so in our marriage so let me just backtrack a little bit because when we first started dating I was still in that mentality of even though I was working and I was I was managing a salon and then I moved on to kind of like run my own business as a hairstylist, but I was still in that mentality of I want to be just like my mom. I want to, not that I don't want to be like my mom now, but I still was like very, very tunnel vision on I want to be like this cookie cutter, like stay at home mom that makes everything perfect, even though we didn't have kids yet. Like I want to provide this cozy house for us and I'll do all the housework and I want to do all the cooking and blah, 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 all the stuff. And as years went on, my fault, but for lack of better words, I kind of trained my husband that I'm going to do all these things. You just sit back and go to work, but I'm also working. Okay. Well, I'm getting more and more tired and then a baby comes into the mix and then you can kind of feel the resentment boiling up because it's like, who's working harder? So as my mindset has shifted on what I want my life to look like with the balance of being this wonderful stay at home mom figure, as well as an entrepreneur, I started to shift what our responsibilities in the house needed to look like. And thank goodness, my husband, it took a little, a little bit of time because it had been years and years of me being like, no, no, let me do it. Let me do it. So now our daughter is two years old and most of her life, things have been super equal. Quentin goes to work for eight hours a day. I'm home taking care of Nora most of the day and my work is a lot more fluid. So I do a majority of the household chores that need to be done like while he's away, you know, throughout the day, taking care of Nora, all of those things, but all of the chores that need to be shared, you know, once he's home are completely shared. We have a really good system of breaking things up. I'm still kind of like the house manager just because I'm here all day and with, you know, the kiddo and everything. Um, But we're finally to a point where for our dynamic and like me being the stay at home mom slash work at home mom, it's a very, very perfect balance. 
between the two of us. And I, it's really fair, which I think is important because if you both don't feel like it's fair, that's going to cause a lot of issues. And the other thing that I do have to add in is just um, the way that Quentin is with Nora, even though I'm like her sole caregiver, the second that he gets home or on the weekends, it is like total partnership tag team taking care of her, which I do not understand why strangers think that that's so special to see like a dad Mm. going on a walk with the daughter or like changing a diaper or, you know, feeding her dinner while I'm out for a run or whatever it is, because it's just as much of his kid too. But, you know, that's like a whole nother tangent that we probably should go down, (laughs) honestly, in this episode, because it's like, that's kind of how it should be. You both made this child. So you both should be equally within the parameters of your work home situation. You should be equally responsible for caring for this little human. Yeah, no, I uh, definitely what you're, what you're talking about with you and Quentin kind of figuring out your balance uh, resonates with me. So Rudy had a very traditional upbringing for like a Hispanic household. You know, I, I'm new to, so I'm learning all about this, but um the women take care of the men. And so even growing up, like, um, you know, Rudy was used to seeing his mom, even though she also worked, he was used to seeing her still manage and take care of the entire household. Um, you know, she cooks all of the meals and like, they're, they're not like making an easy Mac, like, it's like <laughs> legit meals, you know, um, you know, she refills the, the water glasses at the, at the table. Um, you know, Rudy, I think she did his laundry until probably yesterday, you know? Um, so he's, she might still sneak into the house and do his laundry. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> so, so he was very used to that. Um, the cool thing was, it's kind of right when we got together and moved in together. Um, you know, he brought that up. He was just like, just so you know, I'm, I've been programmed that this is what I should expect from my partner. So there may be times when you're going to have to check me because I'm not even going to realize that I'm expecting you to do things for me. Um, and I remember in that moment, like it was in our little tiny apartment in Southeast Portland, just being kind of blown away by like, you know, his, his honesty, his transparency and his like emotional intelligence to recognize before anything had ever happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I was still in that, like, I'm going to cook him, you know, meals and stuff. I was trying to like really impress him, like win him yeah. over, right. Get him fattened up. So he'd stay. Mm-hmm. Um, all that stuff. <laughs> Um, and, and I just remember thinking that was so cool. Um, and it did, it does happen every now and then, um, where, you know, Rudy, Rudy did expect me to do more or or whatever, but we've always been able to really have that open and honest conversation. And honestly, it's, it's probably shifted a little bit. (laughs) Rudy, even though he works and I work now, um, he probably does more at home. And I probably, I mean, like he definitely does. I'm trying to like save a little bit of faith. He definitely does more at home. (laughs) um than I do and he does it better like he's a much better cook than I am and this is he's he's been teaching himself to cook for the last couple years um and so we I think we have settled into a balance which you know now there's going to be a kid so obviously that that balance is going to shift Mm. but to your point we spent a lot of time talking about this idea of co-parenting right Mm. and this idea of co-parenting is basically um if a man does more than 20 percent oh he's a co-parent and it's like, okay, well, let's think about what the word co, co is very like even split, right? Shared yeah. responsibility. But yeah, if a man does one thing that a woman does all the time and, and you know, give him a round of applause and accolades for being such a good dad, to your point, or we went for a walk with his kid. Um, and so Rudy and I talk about that a lot because our plan really is Rudy is going to be the primary caregiver for our child. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes the most sense for us for several reasons. Um, and then so it's going to be on me to be that co-parent and make sure that, you know, when I get home, I'm not like, oh, I worked all day, so I don't want to do anything. Meanwhile, he's like, bitch, I worked all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking care of our child. I was, I yeah. was raising the next, you know, generation. Like, I, I want a break. Um, and so we, we talk about that a lot. Um, so I, even honestly, we've been talking about that since way before we even got married, let alone <laughs> got pregnant. So I just thought it was interesting that you brought that up. That's the classic, the classic fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I, yeah, I think I, I struggle with this topic within my marriage, I think, because 
it's it can get to be a little sensitive of a subject. Um, my husband grew up, his parents like are still married. His mom stayed home or, um, you know, she'd work some part-time jobs and take the kids with her or whatever. She, you know, cooks every night, their house is clean, like super old school, traditional, like you would think. Um, so I think he, that's what he expects also. And I mean, that in general makes sense with the way that our, um, like situation is like I'm the one staying home he works 12 hour days two hours away so he like works a ton so I should be the one at home like running everything which sounds great and logical but it just does not happen <laughs> it just doesn't happen I I don't have that strong background of like one being home with an adult to like get into a routine of like cooking and cleaning is just not I'm like a like I said, the college roommate thing, I'm still there and I'm 33. Like it's, <laughs> it's hard. I really struggle. And then adding, taking care of two kids. I had two under two, like that. I feel like that in itself, like if you're staying home and taking care of the kids, like you should, you deserve a cook and like someone to do your laundry. It's so hard to do both. It's mm -hmm. so hard to do both. And then having a partner that i I just feel like if you're not the person in the soul like child care provider position you just cannot comprehend what it's like to be in that position it's so much harder than it looks and it's exhausting mm -hmm. and I just to have someone come home and like oh maybe not fully like I feel like not always fully appreciate all the shit that I got done whether the house looks good or not it's a ton of work so that's kind of a an interesting issue that sometimes arises like you know I maybe that fell behind on some of the housework stuff but look how cute and happy our kids are like that's also still legitimate hard work so we're trying I think we're still working on finding that balance and I just like keep telling myself oh it'll get better when the kids are in school <laughs> and I'm home all day and can like catch up on things but it's tough, but I also will say I totally like catfished my husband when I met him. I got out of like my terrible high school boyfriend relationship. I was so, looking back, just so sad and so desperate. I used to, in the dorms, go up to his room, get his laundry for him, take it to the like coin laundry thing, do his laundry, fold it and bring it back. When he moved, when we moved out like into apartments, I would drive to his apartment, get his clothes, bring it back to my apartment, do his laundry, take it back. Like some kind of fucking psycho. <laughs> like, I don't know what possessed me to do that. And so now it also kind of like makes me happy because now I'm like, I'm sorry that you thought that that was going to continue. <laughs> like I, I set you up to be so disappointed, but yeah, bad, really bad. <laughs> So yeah, I'm like, I, it's, it's, that one's a tough one to look back on, but he likes to bring that up. <laughs> Bait and switch. Oh, <laughs> Laundry is the one thing that even like when I was just total homemaker, I never started doing my husband's laundry. And in fact, I did it one time and he paid me a hundred dollars to do it <laughs> because it was so out of control. But I just don't, I don't know why I was just like, I'm not, I'm just not going to do his laundry. And actually that's kind of set a little bit of a, a staple for some of the things in our marriage. Like if it's something that is specifically our own thing, we take care of it, which has been really good that we've kind of morphed into that thing. Um, it makes just like the overwhelming amount of things that need to be done a little bit easier to just kind of separate it like that, even though we're still very much a team, just having that split and knowing like, that's my thing. I have to take care of that. That's your thing. You take care of that. Okay. It's done. Of course, there's some things that are like gray areas and those usually fall on me, <laughs> but I, I'm also like a little bit of a control freak. So I also like it that way. So it's just really interesting. <laughs> Our dynamic here. <laughs> It's it's funny because Rudy and I have an interesting dynamic when it comes to like housework, um, but it's definitely not anything I've ever heard of. Uh, we both think that the other one does far less housework than ourselves do because we <laughs> both clean everything. 
but we have very <laughs> different definitions of what cleaning is. Mm. So for me, I want my house to look like it's for sale and is ready for an open house at all times. I want all my counters empty. I want my blankets folded and put away. I want nothing out anywhere. But for Rudy, he just moves the clutter and he wipes under it. <laughs> Whereas I yeah. may not spend as much time wiping. <laughs> I may, mm -hmm. I'm, I may clean. I may clean the house, but I just put everything away and like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't get to sleeping. So he's like, "What did you even do? The house isn't even clean." But if <laughs> I come home and he's like, "I clean the whole house," I'm like, "There's shit everywhere. What did you clean?" <laughs> so it's actually super funny because it took us a really long time to figure that out. Where we would both be like, "You don't recognize anything that I do," <laughs> and then we realized like, "Oh, we have very complementary if we if we work together like." cleaning style so now we do like depending on what's going on we'll all you know if we've got time it's very rare actually that we have a lot of time off together but I'll be like 10 minute cleaning party and mm -hmm. so we'll just like descend and clean the main point and kind of alternate between each other we're like I will put the things away <laughs> where they go <laughs> and he'll wipe 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 and like, <laughs> sweep. And, like um, it, but it was really funny because it, it took us probably longer than it should have to figure out <laughs> that's what was happening when it came to uh to house tours we still vehemently disagree about which one of those things is actually clean and which one isn't, but... but that's good that you guys balance each other out like that that's mm -hmm. that's perfect okay so you're having a baby you mentioned that you guys are planning on rudy staying home and being like the primary caregiver um what other kinds of like gender traditional norms, values, or non-traditional things are, um, do you plan on like instilling in your child? Yeah, well, so Rudy, the plan is no longer for Rudy to actually stay home. That's always been our plan, um, but uh, that's recently changed only because uh, we have a really good situation where his mother lives 20 minutes down the street and works at home. So mm -hmm. Rudy's still going to be the primary caregiving parent because he only works part-time, whereas I work double time, <laughs> as you could call it. Um, but but he does, he's not going to quit and stay home um, if this works. We're going to kind of test it out, see how mm -hmm. it works, um, and then and then kind of go from there. But he will he'll still be like the primary parent. Um, but as far as I mean, yeah, we honestly we have had a ton of conversation about this, about, um, you know, how do you raise a kid and break all of these stereotypes wide open? Mm -hmm. How do you, and you know, and I, I live in Portland, right? So people go, I mean, I've got extremes on either side of me. You go west yeah. <laughs> and I've got nothing but Trump signs. You go east and I got nothing but, you know, anarchy signs. Like it's, <laughs> we're kind of everywhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, so I've got, I've got people in my life who just let their five-year-old decide what gender they want to be, mm -hmm. um, which, okay, I understand the intent behind that, but if you asked me what I want to be when I was five, I would have said I wanted to be a boy. And guess what? I don't want to be a boy. I'm terrified of vaginas. I have one, and I'm terrified of the rest <laughs> of them. I, I wouldn't want to be a boy. I, there's so many reasons why. I like being a woman, so I think that's, that's a really extreme, and then obviously you've got just the the casual carelessness of you know telling a boy quit acting like a girl mm. okay well that teaches boys that girls are lesser than and that teaches a girl that hears that that boys are better than them even stuff like that can just have such an impact on a young growing child so Rudy and I talk about that stuff a lot and kind of what we've decided as far as like how do we tackle the topic of gender roles, gender identity, gender stereotypes with our kid is we just have to educate them. We have to talk to them about, um, you know, we're going to have a little boy, which I probably will get flack for this, but arguably is easier in that field. Because with a girl, you have to teach them to stand up for themselves. You have to teach them to be confident and not be upset when people call that bitchy or bossy. You have to teach them that they are equal and, and just as good as guys, but you also have to teach them to defend themselves from guys who are going to try to physically attack them. Like, there's just, trust me, we've been thinking about this for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But with a boy, it's, okay, how do we teach this boy that he's not better than the little girl in his class? 
that he's equal to her. And in fact, he should champion her and he should make sure that she feels equal and that she's included and that she has a voice and, and, and that he can support her in raising and using her voice. Um, and so we just decided that it starts with just, just being really open about that, being really honest with our kid as soon as we're able to, you know, um, obviously I'm not going to like start now, yeah. um, just about, about gender norms and, and about gender stereotypes and the impact that they can have on people um, and how unfair they can be, um, you know, similar to a lot of the unlearning that people are going to right now with race mm-hmm. is we've always taught, I mean, probably you guys had the same upbringing that I did where it's like, Oh, oh we, you don't, I don't see race. Like, and that was the, that was what mm-hmm. you wanted is like, I don't recognize race. And now we know that that's demeaning and wrong and that you have to see race and recognize it for its differences and understand it. And so that's how we want to tackle gender stereotypes is just educating our kid on the damage that they can cause. So yeah, no, nope, no pressure. A lot of time talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's a scary thing and just like thinking of this little human is just this blank slate and they don't see anything different besides what you tell them in these very very formative years it's so terrifying and you know I don't want to get too political but it's just like raising a kid in this climate that we're in is pretty terrifying and just you know, doing our best to make them better mm-hmm. and to make them kind of shape themselves into. Sorry, that's my dog. Can you guys hear that? He was burping. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, dog, calm down. Try to shape them into this generation that's hopefully going to change the world is just like no pressure at all. Hopefully, we're doing this well enough and just so terrifying. Yeah, this is um, one issue that I am very, um, like, outspoken and adamant about in our family. Um, It's funny that you said boys are easier, Jess, because I think I spend a little more, like, I feel like, or maybe the, the issues are a little more emotional when it comes to my son, because I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of, like, toxic masculinity comes from I mean these boys I mean from young ages being told like stop crying don't be a baby you know don't be a sissy um Mm -hmm. suck it up whatever all this kind of stuff don't oh that's a that's a girl toy don't play with those all of that like awful crap Mm -hmm. I am like do not put up with for my kid so oh he wants to paint his nails he paints his nails more often than his sister does (laughs) he's worn her like hand me down clothes or like oh he doesn't have a jacket he's gonna put on his sister's jacket and like I have had family members like make a comment about it like you know on the side like oh he's wearing you can't wear you know that jacket out in public or whatever and I just like tell my husband I'm like if they want to come say that to my face and bring it up as an issue I welcome it because I would love to have that conversation with them about why pink doesn't have to be a girl color it doesn't matter and kids are those blank slates and they don't they don't know if you're not teaching them these things like my son's not going to inherently know that okay don't wear boys don't wear pink nail polish like he's not going to know that unless we teach him that and I want him to think you know one on one hand it's kind of tricky when you get into school age with like Mm -hmm. bullying and stuff and I don't want to set him up for that either but I don't I don't want either of them to like think that the way they play or what they play with depends on their gender I just think that's silly but I will say I mean with yeah there's a lot to worry there's a lot to worry about on both sides but with girls I'm not even ready to go there like worrying (laughs) about teaching her you know the dangers of life but I did think it was interesting today um my husband watches a lot of sports and we had the baseball game on and she was like how come there's no girl baseball players and I was like, hmm. I was like, normally, if you weren't here, your dad would say no one likes watching women play sports. <laughs> but he didn't say that, thank goodness. And he like had a little conversation with her, you know. And we, we were basically like, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be a professional baseball player, you do it. You practice every day, like work hard, and that you know you can be whatever you want to be, and that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. um, it was just one of those times where she like asked it, and I was just like, oh, like it just felt like icky that like. 
there's a lot of those instances where women just aren't, you know, aren't equal in or haven't, you know, broke through that glass ceiling or whatever. And luckily that one was kind of like a low key, easy thing to talk about, but there's so many instances and they're going to be a lot of much harder conversations. And it's kind of nice to see, I'm hoping things moving in the right direction and getting more progressive and um, women's rights and equal pay and, you know, all of that stuff, you know, coming to fruition, but we'll see about all that. You know. Yeah, I was like, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, yeah. Yeah. we'll just like, keep, our <laughs> yeah, keep our fingers crossed. Ugh. Um, yeah, yeah I think, but... I think I, yeah, when I say boys are easier, I don't, I, I mean more so, like, later on in life. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. uh, you don't, I mean, there's a lot you have to teach a boy that you wouldn't, people don't think through, but you don't have to teach them how to defend themselves from a rape attack like you do. You know, you know what I mean? Like that, that's the stuff that really freaks yeah. us out. Or like mm-hmm. for Rudy, you know, the, uh, he, he was a, uh, I mean, I don't know how to say it. he was just like a total fuck boy. <laughs> like he's terrified <laughs> of how do you, how do you teach your, you know, a, a daughter to not fall victim to that, which mm-hmm. just continues to like reduce their self esteem. And then there's this ugly cycle um, and honestly, he, he was like, secretly he wanted a girl. Cause I mean, I think he's just built to be such a good girl dad. And it would just be, the moments would be just amazing, but he would die of just sheer anxiety at the second she was old enough to even like see a boy. I think it would just <laughs> kill him. So we lucked out. That's why I say easier, easier, I guess, mm-hmm. really for Rudy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> worried about that with Quentin I you know um both of our moms don't have husbands and just like the thought of either of them dating is he's just like already like a dad in that regard and my younger sister and my husband's sister are you know both kind of single my younger sister has a boyfriend now but just like any guy that they would bring around he's very like oh no, who are you? Who's this guy coming in? I'm terrified for Nora because also in the same regard, when it comes to raising a little girl, yes, I, you know, want to make sure that she learns how to respect her body and respect herself and, you know, protect her from fuck boys out there and everything like that and and getting raped and all of that. But I also want her to be able to express herself through her body if that's how you know if that's how she chooses if she wants to wear a certain outfit and I say that now when she's a baby and I can still control everything she does but (laughs) if she wants to you know wear something or express herself in these ways I want her to feel confident in doing that for herself not for anybody else not to impress a guy but just to you know express herself and just giving her that self-respect and that confidence in her core to grow up and be able to do that. And hopefully by then it's a little less um, of a toxic environment for women who do choose to express themselves in different ways. Can I just say parenting sucks. (laughs) It's so hard. (laughs) I mean, and there's like, as we're talking, the wheels are just turning and there's just so many of these conversations that we have to have with our kids like you Mm want to make sure they grow up with like body positivity and you know um and also not like um like sexually shaming them kind of thing like Mm -hmm. kids start touching themselves like okay don't do that but you don't want to scare them away and make them like turn out weird perverts because they get like who knows there's just like so many (laughs) aspects and so many things that you could say wrong Mm -hmm. that you have to like really sit back and like think about your values and what you want to instill in them and how you want to raise them before you do anything (laughs) before you do anything just in case or or like consent so that's a big Mm -hmm. one that we've talked about uh because rudy's again family background is like you hug and kiss everybody go hug and kiss this person go hug and kiss Mm -hmm. and i'm very much like if you don't want to hug that person you're not hugging that person Mm -hmm. i'm not going to make you at a very young age believe that anybody in this space is allowed to touch you because Mm -hmm. then if there's an incident of some type of sexual you know predator type stuff they're the kids how are they going to know because i've programmed them to believe that not that like rudy's family you know but just in general right like 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, we, we've been talking about that because I'm like, I, I will not force my child to hug or kiss anybody. Like, that's not, yeah. I think that sets a really dangerous programming like precedence for them at a young age. But yeah, to your point, there's so many things. Somebody brought up to me the other day, they're like, <laughs> I was like kind of having this conversation with somebody a couple weeks ago before we knew if it was going to be a boy or a girl. And they were kind of asking me about this stuff because I'm very um, opinionated. So people like to, <laughs> to hear what my thoughts are <laughs> and then like try to strike me down or, or whatever. Um, but they were like, they were, they pointed out, they're like, you see that, that bird. Look how, look how cute that bird is. And I was like, oh, that's a cute little guy. And they're like, why is it a guy? Mm-hmm. They're like, we do that with kids. Oh, honey, look at that. Look at that deer on the side of the road. He's so pretty. He's so majestic. We mm-hmm. default to he. We give things male pronouns commonly, which is just like another way of programming girls that like, that's the default, that's the mm-hmm. main. And I was just like, <laughs> like, my brain exploded at like this, the very small, simple ways that we can accidentally perpetrate these, yeah, these gender stereotypes that I was just like, damn, <laughs> I gotta yeah. reevaluate like everything that I do in life, apparently. <laughs> I fun okay. fact. Oh, just fun fact about that. I read that Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively intentionally use girl pronouns for most things to get rid of, you know, to rewire their kids that way. I thought it was really interesting. I love love them so much. <laughs> I yeah. think I think that just little things like that, like tweaking the things that we do within ourselves instead of looking at these big scary pictures of like how are we going to break the gender mold for our children right that's just too much there's too much to try to digest there so just like little things like that like changing your pronouns or you know to your point Jessica when you're talking about like the consent at home if we're like tickling Nora or whatever and she's laughing and says stop I've been really trying to, you know, myself and tell my husband, like, if she says stop, we need to stop. It doesn't matter if she's laughing. Like, we just need to condition ourselves. Like, everybody's like, oh, stop, ha, ha, ha. But we just need to condition ourselves to learn to change that behavior and just stop. Um, Another example was in one of her little playgroups that she does. Nora's obsessed with hugging children and there was a little girl who didn't want to be hugged and like conditioning myself to be like oh you need to respect her space she doesn't want you to hug her right now these are things that just don't come naturally to us unfortunately and so just looking in and trying to change some of these habits that we've just been conditioned to do will maybe help slowly tackle these goals that we want to achieve in some way No, I love that you bring up the no, the use of the word no or use of the word stop because Mm -hmm. Rudy is notorious of like, he (laughs) like, will be doing something, he'll be like poking me, prying me, throwing, and I'll be like, stop, babe, stop. And I'll say stop, stop, stop several times and he doesn't. And it was, yeah, it kind of was before we got pregnant because we're just weirdos and we like to talk about stuff a lot. And I was just like, when we have a child, like you have to, you have to stop Mm -hmm. that because our kid is going to see that when you tell a man no or you tell a man stop they don't actually have to stop Mm -hmm. and like but so so we've talked about that a lot Mm -hmm. and i've been like hey babe it's go time like you gotta work you gotta work on this so uh we're yeah we're so we're trying to be really aware of using the word no and using the word stop and in actually respecting it in every scenario that we encounter it so and meaning it to us because i do that too like ha 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 stop like when i don't really mean it but it's like Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that if I'm saying no or stop, I mean it. Yeah. yeah. We, I I get to see that both sides at the same time. Like when my kids are playing and mm-hmm. they're joking around and Piper like, yeah, hey, stop. And Michael doesn't stop. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I try to not be like, okay, we're going to pause and have a lesson. But I'm like, yeah. Michael, if someone <laughs> says stop, you need to stop. Whether she's laughing and sounds like she's having fun, you still need to stop. And I'm like, Piper, if you say stop, you need to mean it. You need to be really clear because if you're like giggling and like having fun and joking around and saying stop it, it I'm like I'm trying to teach her like don't send confusing signals don't give anyone any opportunity to mm-hmm. think you know anything other than what you're trying to say like be very clear with your intentions and but mostly I'm like if someone says stop and I tell both of them I'm like you need to stop if they don't want to play anymore whether you think they're joking or not, stop. And then if they're like, okay, no, I'm just kidding. Let's keep tickling. 
start again but you have to stop every time they say stop like that's i feel like if everyone just like teaches their kids those things that will get rid of so many problems there's like one kid at a time making a difference <laughs> that's the goal was this even a thing when we were kids? I mean, is this something, I'm so curious, I should ask my mom, is this something that you and my dad sat down and talked about? I don't That's even... That's a good question. Yeah. I have asked my mother. You did? <laughs> nice. Well, oh. I haven't, like, asked her, like, did you talk about this? But when Rudy and I bring it up, based on her response, I can tell you, one, she thinks it's ridiculous. Mm. Hopefully my mom doesn't follow you guys on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, she she thinks it's she thinks it's absolutely absurd. She, her her kind of stance is everything just turns out fine. Uh, but that's been her stance with like my you know me changing my diet to be healthier while I'm pregnant. Ah, I didn't do that. I gained fifty pounds and y'all were fine. And I'm like, well, really? Because I have back problems. I wear glasses. <laughs> like there's a lot of things that I'm not that aren't really fine here. You know. Um, but when we yeah, when we bring this up, she just likes to be like, oh, you guys are overthinking it and parenting isn't really that hard and I have to really I ha have a complicated relationship with my mom um because we can't really my family doesn't really honestly communicate with each other at all like there's no emotional intelligence and I had that for a long time I think they can remember me in high school just I wasn't a, I, I wasn't necessarily like a nice person and like, like I was just kind of a jerk but I thought it was like funny like, <laughs> not I to didn't me realize, yeah I didn't I didn't know like you know, the impact that I had. So my family doesn't have a lot of conversation, but I want to say to her, like, you know, hey, mom, I I dealt with self-esteem issues for a really long time um, because of this growing up. Or I thought, like, I, I want to share with her that it doesn't just turn out fine. Um, but I also know that it's just a wasted, it's a wasted breath. It's not worth my energy. I love my mom dearly, but she's far beyond <laughs> the scope of, of understanding or, or changing this, but yeah, it's, and I think, uh, we've, we've brought it up with Rudy's family, just like it, the fear of like, oh my gosh, having a girl, there's all this stuff. And, and they were the same way. They're like, ah, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Like everything's fine. Look at your sisters. Your, your sisters are fine. You know, you're fine. And, and Rudy can share, um, you know, the toxic masculinity stuff that you're talking about. Um, you know, he's, he's had that from a very young age. His dad was very much like, be good at sports, be good at soccer, you're not trying hard enough, um, this and this. And so Rudy dealt with that for a really long time. I've seen Rudy cry like two total times. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just, he just, he was programmed like, yeah, boys don't cry, boys are good at sports, boys are silent and stoic, boys don't talk about their feelings. I had to beat the feelings out of this man um, for a very long time. And so I can confidently say that both of our parents if we were to ask them, like, did you think about this? They would say, no. Why are you guys, you hippies? You know? <laughs> yeah. I think it's just generational. I mean, our generation is just a lot more open-eyed to these kind of issues. Yeah. Yeah. Us millennial parents are woke. Or snowflakes, they sound cool? depending on who you ask. Or oh what? My. Or snowflakes, depending yeah. on, if you ask my yeah. brother, that's what he would say. Oh, yeah. Winter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about that I thought would be interesting, because you just found out that you're having a boy. Did you do a gender reveal? Did you start any forest fires? <laughs> and can we talk about them? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the timing of that, and obviously I'm going to speak from a place of not having had my house burned down or something like that. So I'm not saying that the struggles that I dealt with because of that are in any way similar. Um, but no, that, yeah, that was an interesting timing because that happened and we'd already planned and knew that we were going to do a gender reveal. It's a really small one with Rudy's family in the backyard of my family because we're trying to be safe with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, like we're, there's no changes that we were planning on making to like really how we were going to raise the kid or, or anything like that, but it's, it's just fun to know, right? Like, you know, naming wise or stuff like that. I know there's gender neutral names or whatever, but I had very names that I wanted for each gender, stuff like that. So I struggled with a long time after that happened of like, do I do this? Do I not do this? Uh, because I had a close friend have a gender reveal like a week before mine, maybe. And the hatred that got spewed onto her social media for doing this was, was just astronomical. 
And a lot of it was about the fire, even though she, like, released some balloons. Some people mentioned sea turtles, which I actually thought was kind of funny, like, because balloons kill sea turtles. You know, anyways. Um, <laughs> but there were so many comments about just how gender reveal parties are harmful and they're this and they're that. And I just couldn't, I, think, I mean, we talked about this already. I just, I just disagree with that. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it's harmful to perpetrate stereotypes, but I think it's equally harmful to be like, hello, you're born. You're nothing. Oh, you're five. Now decide. Like, I just, I think that there is a happy medium, which is, you know, I, maybe I'll be wrong. And, and maybe, you know, my kid can tell me about how many times I, I messed up his life later on but um so we decided to do it we were like screw it you know what um for first time parents this is like a fun cute rite of passage something you need to do celebrate with your family like let's not let whatever the hell other people think get in the way of what we want to do and I think it was yeah like two two days before we were like f this screw everybody else we're gonna do Mm -hmm. what's right for us and what makes us happy um so we, we decided to do it. Good. And it I'm was awesome, that. and I didn't start a fire. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I think, honestly, gender reveal parties, first of all, they really don't have anything to do with the baby. Like, yeah, they do, but they're for you. They're for your family. They're for your friends. Like, it's so exciting that you can, well, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a what sex the baby is like you can connect a little bit more to that life inside of you just kind of putting like a name to them and 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 even a sex if that's I I feel like that's human nature to do that once that baby is here then you can kind of roll with how that's going to turn out but personally I also don't see anything wrong with doing a gender reveal party and I feel like they hit like a really popular super trendy peak and now all of a sudden they're coming like they were extravagant and they still are and now they're coming down on this decline of like no this is so wrong you can't label your kid like this and I'm just so confused <laughs> yes well yeah, there I are have- logistics like I don't have a penis mm-hmm. I need to know how I have to maintain good hygiene for a baby that does have one mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah I'm a planner so I'm gonna need those 20 weeks to research how do you how do you make sure that a that a baby's boy pee pee stays clean? And uh, what about does he need to get circumcised? I don't know anything about that. I've got to I've got to look into that, and I need time to prepare because apparently they ask you like right in the moment, do you want us to cut this bitch or not? And so <laughs> I'm like, so yeah, you, I mean for me it was like it was practical. Like I'm a planner, I need to know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh. I have been thinking about this a lot as I have a very vocal, very like one way group of Facebook friends, which is where I've heard like, so I have heard read such horrific things about gender reveals. People straight up being like, you are a piece of shit parent. If you have a gender reveal and you assume your kid's gender, first of all, are those people parents? Probably not. Definitely not. Second. Yeah. There's a lot of things. One, it's nice to know. And Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting to be able to, like, connect with your baby and not just it, them being an it or okay. them, you know? Like, okay, I picked out this girl name. If you're just because you, <laughs> I'm, like, trying to think of how to word this. Statistically, you're probably going to be right if it's born with a vagina. It's probably going to identify as a girl, statistically. If mm-hmm. not, when they're a little older and you want to have that conversation... That's the time that it matters, mm-hmm. that how you're going to react with them, how you're going to, you know, support them in that. But when they're like a newborn, a two-year-old, I I think, I, I just imagined no one finding out anyone's gender and like just having like a bunch of pat babies running around. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that would be more confusing to a kid than like raising them one way. And then you can still you know, like I said, keep things like fluid and not super strict gender norms, but I I don't think calling them a he for the first few years of his life and having a boy name is going to be completely detrimental if you're an otherwise good supportive parent. Mm -hmm. So the whole backlash thing really surprised me. And I, yeah, I was really shocked. I mean, the fire part is Mm -hmm. crappy. Like, maybe don't do fireworks. Like, who even does that? But 
yeah it's for the parents it's for your friends and family just one more thing to celebrate and parents I mean being pregnant is like the last time you get to celebrate just you like the baby's in you so you like you know get the attention for a while never again so celebrate it like do as much as you can have as many parties as you can and live it up that's what I think here 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 okay so I think that about we can wrap it up we've talked a lot about gender roles I think we're all you know feeling good about sticking it to the man and raising the future generation of (laughs) open-minded individuals um so we will now just ask you our final question that we like to ask all of our guests so if you could share one piece of advice on how to balance being a mom to be and a boss lady what would it be i am gonna be 100 percent honest here i don't know um because obviously this is what i've been you know keeping me up at night the anxiety of of figuring (laughs) out exactly what this is Mm -hmm. and I mean I could say anything that I would say would come from a place of privilege because I have a really good situation that a lot of others don't have I make really good money um I have the support of my in-laws who live just down the street um I have a husband who's home most of the time um so it's going to be probably a lot easier for me to do this to be a, a you know mom and a, and a boss bitch because I have this support network that's already there. But I recognize that, it, you know, so the advice that I could give would be like, we'll have a really good support network. Well, <laughs> you can't just have one, you know, mm-hmm. th- th- that's a place of privilege just to say that. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess ask me in like a couple of years and maybe I'll have better <laughs> advice. Um, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering that exact same thing myself. Thank you for your transparency, because I feel like that a lot of mom-to-be's are having that exact same struggle. I mean, I was having that struggle. That's part of how this podcasting community came to be, knowing that I wasn't alone. I, I couldn't be the only person struggling with this. So it's it's really, really special to hear somebody come on and be honest saying, I don't know. That's probably the best answer you could give. So thank you so much. All right. Heavy, heavy conversation, heavy topic. Let's kind of loosen up a little bit. So we have a segment on our show called Hot Mess Moments. Life is full of hot mess moments. We've all been there. So in this segment, it is your chance to share an embarrassing confession about a time you've been a total hot mess. Let's do it. So... (laughs) I was talking to my husband about this question last night and he's like, well, how are you going to answer it? And I was like, I don't know. I am a hot mess life. Like everything about me in my personal, and, and that's what he was like, well, it works. You're great. He's like, it's just everything else where you're like, a, <laughs> you're like a really entertaining toddler. You know? so kind of like your college roommate thing. Like he's just like, yeah, it works. You're great. He's like, I don't know if you've been like programmed to just be helpless everywhere else or, or what. Um, but I, I, I thought about it. And the thing that happened most recently that I, I think probably encapsulates my hot messiness is um is that work there's like a meeting and I went to the bathroom and I realized that my underwear were on inside out and I was like well that's weird so I'm like <laughs> I'm like how do I fix this because it's like an open bathroom with several stalls I like throw my pants over because I'm not gonna put it on the ground that's gross of course people are walking in and out I've got my pants so it's obvious <laughs> that I'm like pants live in this stall <laughs> my underwear around I get everything back together I go out of course I'm like kind of laughing because it's just ridiculous. A little bit later, we take another break. I go to the bathroom, still on inside out. I did all of that and I somehow (laughs) put my underwear back on inside out. So I'm like, what the? So I have to do it again. Meanwhile, people are shuffling in and out because we're all on the same break. So we go back to work and I'm just like, guys, can I just tell you a really weird thing that just happened? And so I tell everyone because (laughs) even when I can keep it a secret, I'm still just like, Ta-da! Look at this thing that happened. Um, but I thought that really encapsulates me in a pretty major way. <laughs> I love it. I like it. I thought thought you were gonna tell us that like your tags printed on both sides or something. You know, on your underwear. So like, like oh, oh, you guys oh. are both looking at like you know. So like it it, it looks inside it out really either way. Like, yeah. You know. Ah. But I, I know I know if you guys ask me this question again, like in a couple years, I'm for sure gonna be the mom that goes to drop my kid off 
and I'm wearing like bike shorts, cowboy boots, and like like a, a sports bra, and then it turns out I have to go into the office. Like that's <laughs> for sure that will be me, one hundred percent. So I look forward to telling you guys all about that as the journey <laughs> unravels. You just put it out into the universe. It's happening. <laughs> I have accepted it already. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. One, it's just great to be able to look at both of your faces at the same time. It's been a really great time for me. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having fun. me. I loved it. This has been such a fun conversation. We really appreciate you. And we want other people to be able to follow along on your journey into motherhood. Do you want to give a shout out on where people can find you? Um, so I don't really post much on Facebook and I am pretty private on Instagram. The best place for people, if they're really that interested, is weirdly my cat's Instagram. Yes. <laughs> because although it's mostly pictures of my cat, which you would expect, um, he likes to kind of narrate the comings and goings of our life. So, um, it's kind of a, a way that I can share stuff and be private, but also not completely overload my poor friends and family with just nothing but my cat um so he is leo the forest cat on instagram that's it that's all i got like the question instagram. is are you gonna make an instagram account for your baby you know that's a tough one probably not um i don't know it just seems weird uh but i will probably maybe adjust leo's instagram to be like the adventures of leo and oliver cute um, or something like that to be so that because i i'm hoping that they're going to be like the best of friends otherwise i guess rudy and the kid are going to have to move out but um, <laughs> that's, so that's the plan oh gosh okay well you guys go check out leo the forest cat you will not be disappointed he is gorgeous <laughs> yes he is. he is gorgeous and a great narrator um and yeah so that wraps it up and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Boss Ladies and Babies. If you like this episode, be sure to rate, review, and leave us some feedback. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and join the conversation in our Facebook group at Boss Ladies and Babies. And until next time, stay, stay bossy. bossy.